Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Station Nears. Just as promised, we are having two episodes in a row and just as promised, in today's episode we're gonna automate the furnace system. Now I will have to rearrange a couple of things and I actually wanted to introduce a new wall block. So maybe let's go ahead and take apart a few things. I'm gonna need to get rid of everything in this corner and it's gonna be completely rearranged. So I guess it wasn't really worth setting up the stacker and such. Oh, give me that drill back. <laughs> I want to take apart the furnace, that's what I want to do. I wonder, what if I deconstruct this locker? Everything is probably gonna drop on the floor. Yeah, maybe let me organize this just a tiny little bit and I'm gonna be right back. Okay, I actually decided to rearrange a couple of things. What I did is I poked out the square that we had right here, the iron frame so that we have a little bit more space and we can actually tuck away the locker a little bit. So we just have to fix this corner here. There we go, it's hooked up again, should be working flawlessly. We're gonna put back the grating right there. And now theoretically I should be able to take these away and therefore put a locker in the corner. So maybe let's first input the wall, just like that. I should also have my steel sheets. And then we can place our locker right here and this is a much better position in my opinion. Cool, we did it. All I need is to get rid of this wall still and then we are going to expand it a little bit. But this is going to be a special room. It's actually not a room that I want to have accessible from the inside. But I do want to have a clear view on it. So there's going to be the furnace system. We must not actually use the furnaces within our pressurized base. But what we can do with the shoots and a little bit of logic is initialize the process from inside. So I want to be able to drop my ores in a chest and they are going to be processed outside of the base where the end product then comes back again and everything should be done via a computer probably. Okay, this seems to be enough of an expansion for my taste. That's uh, basically all I need. We can always make it bigger in case we need something better. However, I want to show you something else and that is the construction kit walls. It's different from the iron walls right here in the way that you can make a normal wall and with the mouse wheel you can make a railing or a window. So that is pretty darn awesome I have to say. The railing of course I want here for the outside. Let me see, I should probably be able to set this up like so or does that look stupid? I just hope I will still be able to actually utilize the spaces within the blocks but judging from the hitboxes it looks like that. So here I have my two construction kit walls and here I definitely want a window and then on this side we can have a normal wall for the pipes to lead through I guess. So let's see, can we add that or the glass? No, no, do I have to use a tool? Ah, okay, I can use the iron sheet right here. And I guess for this one we're actually gonna need a tool, but let me see. We can add the glass right here as well, and now it should also be airtight, so this is absolutely perfect. I really love that. Maybe we have to use the welder here as well. No, that doesn't work. You know what, I can figure this out another time. Let me deconstruct this, and for the time being we're just gonna use a normal wall. I still have one right there. So normal wall, you go right here, and we're gonna attach the iron sheets right away. Now this is going to allow me to actually observe what is happening on the outside because I really do like the looks of the furnaces and I really don't want to miss it. Speaking of which, it's probably time to unhook this and set up the actual furnace system. We're going to start automating the arc furnace first of all and for that... Oh, is my chat pack not working anymore? Zero propellant! I already used it all up, that's insanity! Let me actually see, I should have some backup here and it's probably gonna take... No, this time it was stable. I guess we want another one of these canisters and then we're just gonna swap it. So this canister is now empty. We still need to label these guys. So I do know what they actually contain, but since it is empty, I'm just gonna put it in here. Anyways, now that we are on the outside, let's think about how we want to do this exactly. Uh, the items are gonna come in from here and they're gonna also go back through the same wall. So we're gonna need two lines of shoots and I guess right here is probably a good spot for the furnace. We have our input right here and the output on the other side. Oh yeah, it adds up perfectly and of course we also have to hook up this side. We must not forget about this one. And there we go, this should be ready and functional, let me just test it, yeah, beautiful. Okay, time to build a couple of shoots and set up the system. Maybe I actually take apart this wall to be honest, so I don't always have to fly above it. Let me quickly do that. 
Though, I have the opportunity to actually show you the Fabricator. Of course, I checked what the Fabricator is all about and I figured out that we can actually use the motherboard manufacturing in order to do something with the Fabricator. So you can see I have this in my computer and if we start the computer, then this program is gonna run, the Fabricator program. I can also rename this if I have multiple computers and recipes to set up. Right here with the plus, I can give a new task and right here I have a list to scroll through and there's actually all the items, so I don't have to distinguish between the different machines anymore. I can simply go ahead and build everything that is in the game right in the fabricator. And if we select something, for instance the pipe label or whatever, and the fabricator is turned on, then we can also see what it requires. One gram of iron. So you could uh, theoretically collect all of your ingots in the fabricator and I was thinking about doing that, you know, bringing the stuff automatically to the fabricator as a default. And in here we can just uh, give our crafting commands. It doesn't seem to require more materials than the other machines. What it does though, it might be a little bit slower in certain cases. So if you want to make the cables, then the electro printer is of course the fastest one. However, the fabricator seems awfully convenient. There we go, started crafting the shoots. I'm gonna be right back once I figured that I have enough. Oh, they actually only stack to 10, so that should be enough then. There we go, we wanna start with the corner right here. And then I guess we go straight to our target. You can actually place them mid-air. It's kind of an interesting building mode. All we have to do is come right up to this point and here is where I'm probably gonna have my drop, my ore drop. So let's uh, switch that into a shoot bin. Face it the correct way, attach it right there and we should be able to also attach the cables very easily here. And uh, connect! There we go. Now it's time to come from the other side and I guess we're gonna do this in a similar fashion and we will end up on the left side of course and this is where I want the ingots to be dropped for the time being. Maybe eventually we're gonna bring them to the fabricator as I said. Good, I think as of this point I'm actually gonna go up slightly because I want to make like a, a pile of ores and I suspect with the outlet, that's what I've tested so far, we might be able to just drop them. So let's see, I think this is the right way. Uh, stuff is supposed to just drop out of here and of course we also have to hook this up with data. So I guess we're even gonna need a four-way junction here. I seldom have to use them. But it should be hooked up easily. Okay, so how do I activate the furnace like this? This might have been a slight mistake actually. <laughs> oh well, what we're going to need from the electronics printer is another computer. There we go, computer, thank you very much. Let's shut this off and also I want my logic board. It should be convenient or maybe we could even do it on the outside because eventually, theoretically, we shouldn't use it anymore, right? or we, we shouldn't have to look at it actively. But for the time being, we're just gonna have it right here, set it up, and of course, hook it up. Oh, look at that, for the first time, I'm actually using the corner junction. So it does have its usefulness. Great, the system is hooked up, let's enable the computer and see what we can do here. This is the logic controller and we can create a new state, which we should do. And this state, I'm actually going to rename. This is gonna be the auto smelting. So give me a couple of minutes to come up with a theory how we have to do this for this specific system and I'm gonna be right back. Alright guys, I'm back and I figured out quite a few things. We're actually not going to do it with a computer but with logic gates and I'm gonna explain you just why. We're still gonna have a look at the computer. The reason I'm starting in the loading screen is because I made a crucial mistake. I totally forgot to close off my chamber here and gases are gonna be exposed. So let's close this door. And thankfully, we have saved the situation. I just saved in a very, very bad moment here, but everything's fine now. So there's a problem with the computer. Now, the smelting, it, it kind of works if we, you know, enable conditions. For instance, we have a condition for the furnace. We would have to find it in the list here, maybe the arc furnace here. And the condition could be uh, import quantity is higher than zero. Oh, I used the wrong sign, is higher than zero. And if I import something here, let me actually just do that very briefly. And we're gonna grab a couple of ores right here, put them in the chute, activate that, and then put it into the furnace. So now we should see that this condition is true. Hold the phone, something is wrong. I have to check if we really input this stuff. So looking at that, yeah, we have 32 copper ore in there. So <laughs> I'm really not sure why it didn't work. 
Yeah, look at that. Now we have to check mark. So this condition is true. If I set this to less, it is not true anymore, obviously. So now we would have to go ahead and actually set up an action, for instance, for the arc furnace to activate it. So if I select my arc furnace here, we can set it to on and this might be a tick timer. I'm not sure. We can also lock it because if it is a true or false statement, you actually get this option. Or we can activate it for, I don't know. I don't know what the zero stands for because activating is just a one time thing, right? It should be true or false, maybe. So I'm really not sure what this is all about, but the most devastating thing and the reason why we shouldn't use the computer for this system is the power usage. Let me actually quickly demonstrate this. We're going to take the network analyzer right here and we're actually going to input that into our tablet. So swap that cartridge, please, and then turn it on. And if we point this at a cable, we can see if we have a look through this list. So as you can see at the moment, we need exactly 140 watts. Now, if I turn on the computer, we can then see it went up all the way to 340 watts. So this is incredible how much this bad boy sucks up. So my suggestion is to use a couple of gates. Uh, we will have to live with the furnace being on the entire time. We can actually check how much power that uses. If we turn on the arc furnace and have a look at the system again, then it uses 145. So it's just 5 watts and that is still much better than leaving the computer running. We will play around with the computer, but I have the feeling it needs to be way more complicated. If you can use like two logic gates, it's just not worth it. So let's go ahead and actually do that. I'm going to search for my logic gates here. We're going to need two logic IOs. Oh yeah, by the way, I also built one of these power adapters. I actually figured out how to make the solder. That is also something I'm going to show you. It's quite similar to the steel, just with different materials. Okay, cool. Now we have our two logic gates. I'm actually going to put them right next to each other. One is going to be a logic reader and this one here is going to be a logic writer. Now, obviously, we also have to hook them up to the system, but let me maybe get rid of this uh, computer first of all. It's going to have its proper place. And there's still a data input. Now, I'm not sure if you actually have to hook up both data inputs. I'm just going to do it, but I'm not entirely sure this is actually necessary. Perfect. Everything is in place. What we're going to need is the screwdriver, of course, and we need to set up a couple of things. So maybe before we do that, we should take out our labeler and label a couple of things. This shoot bin, for instance, should be shoot smelting. And then we have the shoot outlet. So this is going to be the outlet smelting. Then, of course, we're probably going to have multiple arc furnaces. So we have an arc furnace dedicated to smelting. And that's probably it. Let's also name the logic gates. Reader smelting and writer smelting. Now we can go ahead and set this up. What we want to interact with is, of course, the arc furnace smelting. And the variable we want is the quantity thing. Where is it? Import quantity. And we are going to take this over this number to the logic writer. So what we want to is choose the reader smelting here. There we go. Reader smelting. The output should, of course, also be the arc furnace smelting. And what we want to do is to activate it. So as long as stuff is in the arc furnace, as long as we have a state that is above zero, then it's going to activate the arc furnace automatically. Now we can test this out. At the moment, we still have stuff in the arc furnace. We have 32 items in here. Let me actually check my power. Are we still doing okay-ish? Hmm... Let me actually shut this off. I just want to make sure that we survive this night. So I guess it would be good to kind of exchange a couple of these batteries. I'm going to exchange this one and I'm also going to exchange this one. So we have plenty of power. Good. Stuff is in the furnace. It's time to activate this and we can see we have a state of 32. So 32 items are in there. If we turn this on, then we can observe the state and it's going down because, of course, the arc furnace is going for it. We can also see this visually. Now, the question is, will they come out of the outlet automatically or do I have to do this somehow differently? Oh yeah, we should also check how much power that actually uses. We were at 145 and now we are at 160. So that is pretty good. But we are charting up once again. Still, I do believe we are critically low with power. We should actually take care of that with another solar panel. Before we do that, uh, let's observe the state. We are at 13. That's great. Let's just wait for this to finish. Oh, I actually missed it. The copper apparently comes out of there right away and piles up. So exactly what I was hoping would happen. Now, the question is, can I add multiple ores and is it just going to behave properly? And of course, we also want to test this out with the actual shoots being on the furnace here. 
Oh man, this is finicky, but I think this is the correct orientation. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna input some gold and copper. First the gold, you go right in there, and I want to launch the copper right after that. I just want to see if I can input basically everything, and it's gonna do what I ask. Let's wait until this phase is done, and we shall see if the copper gets smelted automatically. Alright guys, there's just uh, two more gold to smelt. This is the moment of truth. I just hope this works. And we will also see it uh, come out probably. There we go. Oh, 50 in there. And does it smelt the copper? Did it activate again? Ooh, it's not smelting yet. Though the gold did pop out here. Huh, that's kind of curious. What if I deactivate and reactivate this? Okay, so that is a little bit of a disappointment. It doesn't actually reactivate it. If I throw in multiple stacks. Okay, I'm pretty sure I'm going to figure this out in some way or the other. For the time being, what I want to do is probably build a second solar panel. I just feel like it's about time. Look at that, we're already halfway through our power and the night hasn't even really started. Here we have the solar panel. Does it require a lot? No, we already have the materials in there. Now, obviously, we want to set it up right next to the first one and I assume we're gonna have to do some trickery with the logic. There we go, so something along these lines and that is actually not going to work. That is a pity. Yeah, I think we have to place this even further away. So this is going to be the spacing in between the solar panels. But this is going to allow us to actually go straight over there and hook up the cables with the correct circuit. Power line is already hooked up and the other lines we're going to combine right here. And here we go. This should work out. And look at that. They actually work because they are called solar panels, both of them. So if you have them named exactly the same way, then you can have multiple things reacting to the logic. Let's go ahead and finish this solar panel so that it is actually going to work. You know what, I feel like I have to flush my helmet way too often. I think I'm just gonna take this nitrogen filter. Maybe that is actually gonna improve my situation. However, there's one more thing I wanted to show you and that is how to make solder. So maybe because I took this apart uh, for the time being, we're just gonna place this however. There we go, everything hooked up the same way as before. What we now have to do is we have to take a little bit of iron and also lead, I believe. So we can take these 25. We need an equal amount of iron and lead. Let's actually go ahead and input that stuff right... Oh man, jumping action. And that stuff goes right here as well. And we can see pressure is going up. Also, we have the correct furnace components. The only thing we need to do before we can actually press this activate button, it doesn't work at the moment, is add some more pressure. And of course we can do this the same way as before, but it just turned daytime. So I'm actually gonna wait to add pressure until the nighttime again. You know, another thing I was thinking about is to actually place a stacker right here. What this bad boy could do for us is it takes all the ingots we have and as soon as it has like 50 of something, it's gonna output it right here. So maybe that is worth thinking about. We would have to uh, connect it directly to the stacker instead of an outlet here. Hey, voila, it has turned nighttime and I actually tried out this idea that I had. I made a stack size of 50 and I attached it directly to the stacker. So whenever we get 50 of something, it should output it right there. Not sure that doesn't even make sense with the ingots since uh, we can stack them uh, way more than 50. You know, they seem to stack like in whatever number you have them in these machines. But you know, it's just brainstorming a couple of ideas. We need to figure out how everything works so that we can make really, really nice systems. And hopefully we can make things uh, way more complex than they currently are. Good. Before I forget, let's actually go ahead, open up this door. We're probably gonna lose a couple. Yeah, it's always happening for some reason. Maybe we should add additional doors or maybe I should close off this one. I'm not sure, but it stops after a while. So let's go ahead and grab some oxide here. And we also want to grab two volatiles. And we can input them directly into the furnace where we already have our lead and iron. There we go. The pressure went up by hopefully enough so we can activate this. And if we look at this, we should be able to see the result. It might actually take a while. There we go. We'll produce 50 grams of ingot solder. So that is exactly what we wanted to see. Now you also know how to make that. And with the solder, obviously, I made another power module here. Alright guys, it is now quite a bit later, actually a few hours, and I just played around with the logic stuff and everything, and I actually figured out a way how we might be able to do it. It does require a few more modules than I would have liked to. I really tried to narrow it down to three modules, but we're gonna need four. Three are gonna be I.O. modules, and one is gonna be a normal processor, logic processor. 
What I want is a simple logic writer and then we're gonna have two logic readers and last but not least we're gonna have our processor. Now this processor also needs to be something specific. What we are gonna choose is a comparison. So logic compare. Now, basically the idea is we want to compare the input versus the output. And as long as the input is not the same as the output, we want to activate the furnace. So it, it kind of gets activated more than necessary, but at least it gets activated when it receives a new material. So let's go ahead and set this up. For that, I need to label a couple of things. So this first logic reader, I'm gonna call reader furnace input. And then the second one is our reader furnace output. Then we're gonna have the writer furnace. And last but not least, we're gonna have the compare furnace. With that out of the way, let's take our screwdriver and set up a couple of things. So we want to read from the furnace. So arc furnace smelting, and we want to do this twice. Arc furnace smelting, but the first variable is gonna be, let me find it, the import slot occupant. So we're gonna check how many ores do we have in the furnace and here we're gonna check the output, so how many ingots we have there. If we look at this we can see it is a state of zero, so that means nothing is in the input or in the output. It's actually only zero or one, it doesn't specify a number. Then what we want to do is we want to compare these two numbers, so let's go ahead and choose, if I can find it, the reader furnace, I want the input first and then the output. So we're gonna compare the input versus the output and right here, uh, what do we want to choose? Hmm, I'm not really sure what to set up here on the top. Writer furnace maybe, I mean uh, we are gonna send this to the writer but actually this is where the input comes from. So here on the writer module we want to have to compare furnace and then of course we want to influence the arc furnace smelting and we want to do it by activating it. So if I activate it, that should be good. So whenever we have something in the input of the furnace but nothing in the output, then we should have a number one. Ah, this is not the right module, I just see that. We want the logic compare, not sure what went wrong there. There we go, that's much more familiar. Now we can actually go ahead have the reader furnace input on one side and reader furnace output on the other side and then what we want to do is we want to say not equal. So if the input doesn't equal the output then we want to have a number one. And the number one is going to be sent to this logic writer which of course lost its input. Okay, amazing. At the moment we have a state of zero, nothing in the input or the output. I already prepared a little something here. We have five units of copper and five units of iron. So I'm just gonna input them right here, one after another. And we should be seeing, yeah, the comparison. Oh, it isn't turned on, but there we go. Now this turned on and also the furnace has turned on because we have a state of one right here. Now theoretically, as soon as we have smelted our five copper, then this should switch to zero briefly and then the iron comes after that and it switches to one again. And we just saw that happen here. So the furnace is continuing to do its stuff and we should have our output right here. Let me see, can I just uh, unload that? Yeah, there we go. Our five copper and the iron should follow right away. Perfect. We finally have the automatic smelting in the joint. It required two more logic modules and a lot of figuring out stuff, but I did figure out a few other things that I'm kind of curious to implement in some way or the other into this world. Cool, so with that out of the way, I would say we're going to wrap it up. I achieved my goals, we have a lot more power and also the smelting is now done automatically. I still have to think about the end here, it's probably not a good idea to actually use a stacker. I would much more prefer to actually work with the fabricator because it basically replaces all of these machines. If we have all the materials in here, we can just interact with the computer and do our thing. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye-bye.